Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. Today's video is going to be showing my upgraded homemade brewery control system. This is uh, basically a an upgrade to what my original video was with a smaller gray box. I've added a couple things since then and kind of cleaned up things to where it looks more neat and a little more professional, I think. And a few other features that I think was going to be more convenient as time goes on. I also will discuss a little bit about my electrical upgrades to the brewery and to the basement down here. And uh, here we go. So the main upgraded features that I've done with this controller, you still have the pretty much the same pieces here. I have my indicator light, I got my controller, um, potentiometer, I have my display output for the wattage, the amps, and uh, the total uh, wattage use, watt hours used for when I'm you know, just double checking how much I use. It's usually about 2.3 kilowatts of power for a particular uh, brew. And then over here is my switch where I can uh, bypass the system altogether uh, with the adjustment. So I have full power coming inbound from the plug all the way out to the element. And then I can turn it off and then set it to here where I can adjust it with the uh, potentiometer. So it's a good safety uh, to be able to turn things off if something were to happen. And it's always great to see what the output wattage is here. Inside, I've up upgraded the cooling. I've actually added a second fan and the fan is now inside. So this fan is on the bottom. This is actually drawing air in. And I don't know how well I can get a picture of it in here, but what we're looking at is that fan is blowing air inside. We're looking at an Aubin's uh, solid state voltage regulator. This is not a solid state relay. There is a difference in those devices. And uh, all the wiring, you know, is in here is about as neat as I can get it. The second fan is up on the top. The interesting thing about this is that it's also uh, drawing in air uh, from the top. And then all the hot air exhaust is going out a hole here on the side. So a little bit more airflow, and uh, there is a 12 volt power supply inside here. If I can get a good, better picture, it's in that upper corner. Just wire that in, and um, you know I think that it's a little bit more overkill than anything. But <clears throat> being that this is plastic, I don't want to take a chance that uh, the inside of the box will overheat. You want to make sure it has adequate venting. I've also internalized the outlet here, makes it for a lot cleaner look, and uh, my Original idea was to add a switch somewhere here on the uh, control panel where I can turn this outlet on and off But um, I kind of ran out of room. I mean, I probably still could do it here, but uh, I'm just gonna leave it the way it is I'm gonna get one of those uh, inline switches where because I want to be able to turn the pump on and off It'll actually just plug in here and it'll have a red toggle switch It's good for up to 15 amps, which is more than enough and that's what I'll use for uh, turning my pump on and off so I don't have to unplug and plug it back in for uh, shutting it off. The other upgrade I'm going to do is right now this is your standard L630 that goes to your element. I've had, I forget exactly what the L version of this, but it is the, it's is—it's got the flat blade on the neutral side and this was designed for 20 amps and uh, it's all 10-4, uh, well 10-3 wire here on the element and then 10-4. So there's four wires in a ground, uh, four wires with the ground and uh, I was using my 20 amp uh, GFCI outlet there, but uh, the upgrades to the electrical and the brewery, I will be changing this out from this end to a more uh, traditional, at least in this, in most home breweries, is in what's called an L1430. It's a twist lock. It's good to up to 30 amps. And uh, what you're basically looking at here is you got your ground, your neutral, and your X and your Y hot. And the good thing about this setup here is that right now it's set up for 120 volts. If I wanted to, I can go inside here and make a change to the wires uh, very slightly. The red wire there is, is the other hot wire. Right now this is again wired for 120 volts. That uh, solid state voltage regulator can handle up to 40 amps and up to 240 volts. The only thing I would need to change is a few is one wire to move that red wire to the element. And then changing out this potentiometer, you actually have to change the value of it. I think it's um, you have to put a higher resistance value so that uh, it operates correctly. But uh, I do have that as a, as a drop-in piece ready to go when I, have, when I upgrade. But uh, I think I'm going to be on a 120-volt system for at least for the, for the time being. I don't really have that many brewery, uh, brewing times where 
it's more than five gallons. Just to give you an idea, this is my 30 gallon pot. I've traditionally always had a propane setup here, which I can still use, but uh, I eventually would like to put a 5,500 watt element in this kettle should I have a bunch of guys that want to share in uh, brewing, say, a 15 or a 20 gallon batch. It's kind of far and few in between, but I still like the ability to brew that much in case I do have one of those brew days. So here's an updated view of the home nano brewery down in the basement here. It's still under construction and one of the things you might have noticed since the last video is that I have a single basin sink. Uh, cool story about this. Got it from a guy who runs a gas station and I guess the with the state that I live in the health inspector said you had to have a three basin sink. He couldn't use the single basin sink after he had gotten it installed. It was pretty much useless to him so I got that for about a hundred bucks and it also included the faucet setup, which was a pretty good deal. Uh, it needs a little bit of cleanup, but the good thing is, is that I have the waste stack right here, and uh, I'm going to have to run the plumbing at some point here, but that'll be for another video. And uh, as you can see, the hood I've upgraded to some LED lights so I can better see what's going on. And, uh, you know, I have my 7.5 gallon pot here, and this is where I would uh, normally do all my brewing. Over here, uh, I've kind of done a little bit of upgrades to the electrical. I mounted some 2x4s here where the controller box is going to go. I still have to wire in my transfer switch. And um, up here is really the biggest improvement. I've added a sub panel and I uh, have added all my circuit breakers downstairs. That runs the bar, that runs the, the diner, the pinball machines, all the outlets downstairs here. So it's got separate power. And then I have a double pull 30 amp that runs an L1430 outlet here. It's actually currently running a 5,000 watt heater, keeping the basement warm. And uh, what I want to do is I want to use that plug uh, for the uh, brewery as a way to power everything. But right now I have just have a standard out uh, double pull breaker in there. I have to install one of these. This is what is called a GFCI. Uh, breaker here. This will trip a lot quicker than a standard 30 amp if it uh, sees a ground fault. So I'm going to have to install this first before I use it with the brewery. So I'll just replace that one double pull 30 amp. The good thing here is that I have still have this uh, 20 amp uh, GFCI outlet here if I wanted to. Right now this is just powering the hood and this will eventually power the fan too. But uh, I have more than enough power to run my uh, brewery downstairs. It is a little bit of a mess, it's still under construction, but I'm really liking the way that it uh, is coming out. And here's the final installation. We've mounted the box onto the wall here. I have the element disconnected for demonstration purposes. I have the L1430 plug now on the wire here that's running the controller and swapped out the double pole 30 amp for a GFCI double pull up here. That's what's currently running the brewery. And it's very important you have that GFCI. It's there for safety. Quick demonstration of how everything works. It's the same as before in my last video. Just a little bit more neat. I'm going to put my own uh, water slide decal here of the brewery. The <laughs> Something for fun there. I'll do that in the next video. But uh, here we have the controller. So what we'll do is we have one, zero, and two. So position two means that it's a direct connection between the uh, inlet and then the outlet that's going out to the element that this is constantly on. This adjustment potentiometer has no effect on the output voltage or the uh, wattage going out there. Right now I'm only drawing 0 0.12 amps and that's just for the fans. So we'll turn this off. That's a true disconnect. Now if I wanted to adjust the output, I have set this to number one. As you can see, the intensity is a little bit less I have it can go all the way up or I can have it go all the way down. As you notice, the light is still on even all the way down. That is because of the type of regulation that this regulator uses. Uh, technically speaking, it is using what's called phase angle modulation, not pulse width modulation as a solid state relay would. So there is some efficiency differences and you can't exactly turn it all the way off. Not a big deal uh, because I have it right here. I can always turn it completely off by turning off this switch right here. Typically to keep a rolling boil for a seven and a half gallon pot, I'm usually around, I don't know, 50 to 55%, sometimes a little less. If I have the, keep the lid on there, it's a lot less. I could probably bring it down to like 45%. And uh, I don't know, I'd say it's about a, 
anywhere from 900 to 1100 watts to get a nice rolling boil here for say a three and a half uh, three and a half gallon boil or a four gallon boil finally on the pump operation i'm using one of those solar pumps you know cheap one from amazon nothing uh, really too special i will eventually upgrade to something better it's running off of a 12 volt power supply and it works just fine for the, for my purposes i'm just using it for the recirculation when i have the uh, brew bag in there but the good thing now is that i don't have to keep on disconnecting this one piece right here i picked up one of those cables to go switches off of amazon and all it really is is just a little adapter here where it goes in line with the outlet underneath I've got my outlet underneath and it's got a simple on and off switch so when this is plugged in it lights up and it runs the pump and I can shut it off when I need it to. Perfect. So I hope everyone's enjoyed the video. If there's any questions on the setup on how I've wired it, I took a couple pictures and some video of it, but the wiring is fairly straightforward if you're familiar on how to build these devices. And again, safety first, make sure you have the proper GFCIs and uh, hopefully for the next video, as I continue to upgrade the nano brewery downstairs, I'll have a working sink and we'll have uh, some beer brewing. So cheers guys, take care.